Micomsoft Capture Board is an excellent way to record the screen of another computer without putting any load on the system being recorded. It seats into a single PCI Express Generation 2 bus slot of any bandwidth. With the addition of the optional piggyback bypass card, it occupies a second slot space. There are four ports, a DVI input, a DVI bypass output, and input and output ports for breakout cables, which are for composite, S-video, and component situations. Also included are DVI to VGA and DVI to HDMI adapters, plus an assortment of case mounting brackets. With my recording hardware setup, I have a recording system with its display and a DAW system with its display. The video card installed in the recording system connects directly to the recording system display. Normally, the video card installed in the DAW system would connect directly to the DAW system display. With the addition of a capture card to the recording system, the video signal from the DAW system is redirected to the DVI input of the capture card and then unchanged out the bypass port to the DAW system display. This enables the capture card to also process the video signal stream and encode it to video on the recording system. Attached to the DAW system is the Gina 3G audio interface I use for a microphone. I use line outputs 1 and 2 on the Gina to connect to the stereo line input on the recording system to provide the live audio. This audio is encoded at the same time as the video stream. The paperwork that comes with the capture board is worthless unless you can read Japanese. I relied on other people's write-ups of their experience for help with installing and configuring the capture board and software. A disc with the capture board drivers and the application software Video Keeper 2 was included, but I searched the internet for the latest versions. Using Internet Explorer 11 coupled with Google Translator, I was ultimately directed to this link. This link is also listed in the description below. From the page, in choosing the version for the Video Keeper 2 and Driver software download, I interpreted the translation trial version to mean beta test version and the formal public version to mean stable version. I chose the formal public version. If clicking on the top blue button does not start the Video Keeper 2 and driver download, disable translation safe mode and try again. Or, if it still doesn't start the download, then switch to the original view and or back again to the translation view and then the button should work. If it doesn't, then try a different browser such as Google Chrome. During some of my research into the capture board, several people mentioned to use just the driver and not bother with the application that it was glitchy. But I have no way of testing it since I couldn't find an English language option when running the software, and I don't read Japanese. So, rather than using the Video Keeper 2 software, I downloaded Amarek TV, which several people praised highly and as you can see, seems to be recommended by Micomsoft itself. Hovering over the Amareco TV official website link shows the translation tooltip. Click on the underlined Japanese characters link to go to the page. Partway down this page, click on the download page link. 
This takes you to a page which shows a download link. Clicking on this link brings up a Google Translation error, but clicking on either link activates the download. After downloading, I extracted the zip file to the Program Files folder, which created the subfolder Amarec TV 310. Within the Amarec TV application, AMV4 encodes the raw video signal to a video file. Without buying a license, it watermarks the video near the lower left with a large translucent AMV logo. Clicking on the AMV4 video codec link takes you down the page. Hovering over the ordering download page link shows the translation pop-up. Click on the underlined Japanese characters to go to the AMV ordering page. Choose your payment method. I used PayPal around $24 converted. After payment, down at the bottom of the page, click the download link for AMV4. This shows a Google translation error, but clicking on either link activates the download. After download, Extract the zip file to a temporary folder and run one of the two AMV4 setup MSI files depending on what type of Windows operating system you have. When you receive the email with the license key after your AMV4 purchase, it may be in Japanese, but the license key itself is a string of mostly Latin characters with a few asterisks thrown in. There is also a URL for the user's manual, which is also in Japanese. If you go to the page in Internet Explorer 11 and prepend this link to the front of it, Google will translate it. This link is also listed in the description below. The page shows the installation steps and some configuration windows. Also know that via the F menu in the AMV4 configuration window, you can choose English for the language. Configuring the software is shown in the next part. I created a desktop shortcut that refers to the amarectv.exe file path and launched it. I clicked through the initial Choose a Capture Device input and format window. This leaves one at the Configuration window Graph 1 Device tab. I will only mention the settings I made and worked best for my situation. By selecting SA7160 PCI Analog 1 Capture Device, the lists of possible inputs and formats populate. I use a DVI-D cable to connect to the board, and I chose the resolution recommended by YouTube, which happens to be my screen resolution. For this resolution, the only two choices of frames per second, either 50 or 59.94, are offered. They are very close to the two frequencies of electricity that are used worldwide. Also, not coincidentally, they happen to be close multiples of the frame rates of television and files used for DVD video. Where I live, we use 60 Hz, so I chose 59.94. For audio capture device, I chose Line In at CD Quality to grab the audio signal coming in from the DAW system. Clicking the Device Setting button brings up the Properties window of the capture board. In the Custom Properties tab, I made sure that DVI-D video input and the SSE3 CPU instruction set were chosen. In the General tab, I changed the file setting path to a folder on my desktop. The drive my operating system resides in is an SSD. I took advantage of the added speed by recording to this drive. The AVI files created, I then moved to a different mechanical drive for later editing. In the Recording tab, I chose a video frame rate of 30 frames per second. If I were recording a game, I would probably go with 60 frames per second. 
for audio compressor, I left it as uncompressed. And even though the bitrate settings were still active, it shouldn't make a difference. But I did some test captures to be sure. When I looked in Camtasia at the properties of the AVI files created by Amarek TV, they were all CD quality as the audio capture device settings reflected. Clicking the AMV4 video codec setting button displays the codec settings window. After a bit of capture tests at various compression settings, I chose DY3 because it seemed to my eyes to have the most faithful image reproduction. After reading a Wikipedia article on keyframe use in video compression, I thought the suggested one keyframe every 30 frames would be fine. Having 3% of the frames uncompressed and being able to seek in one second increments within the video seemed reasonable. After looking over the list of hotkeys in the hotkey tab, I didn't see that they would be of any use to me, so I disabled them. So, those are my particular configuration settings. To get back into the configuration from the normal window, click the upper left icon. The capture card is well worth the cost. The time it takes to research and learn to configure it properly for one's own particular use is well justified as evidenced by the superb results that can be achieved. Music